intros are for YouTubers with an audience. Let's play the kid at the back. It was a many and many a year ago in a kingdom by the sea that a maiden there lived whom you may know by the name of Annabelle Lee. Ah, oh, yes, I know her quite well. We were pen pals, of course. Day one, the beloved. Look at this little key. Professor. As class dismissed by our next meeting, I need a full report of the chosen poem everyone searched. Gothic classroom was then filled with a series of low yes ma'ams and a few hums. I thought it was a male professor. Look at me being misogynistic. How dare I not accept the fact that women can be smart too. <laughs> Satisfied, your literature teacher packs up her things and goes out of the classroom. Once she was out, the students went on a series of chitter and chatter. Others stood up, dragging their chairs and prepared to head out for lunch break. A slight yawn escaped your lips. Your eyes gazed outside through the classroom's windows. Oh, what a lovely backdrop. Just more corporate buildings in urban hell. The sky is starting to dim, the sun's rays blocked by the dark clouds looming. You cursed under your breath. Ah, frick, dude. It's gonna rain. Just my luck, I didn't bother to bring an umbrella too. Not that I would ever open it in front of women, because that would emasculate me, because society makes it that umbrellas aren't for men. Or is that just like my inner monologue speaking? I feel like if I use an umbrella as a man, I'm looked down upon. I'm not an alpha male anymore. Alpha males get wet. You sighted irritation as you stood up from your seat. Suddenly, a tap on your shoulder interrupted your line of thought. You turn your head towards the person asking for your attention. Your eyes meet with cobalt blue ones. They stare into your own orbs, a brow raised as if in slight irritation. She's clearly impatient. Impatient for what? It's breeding season. Oh my god, you look like a fucking Pokemon gym leader. Did you hear me? Do you want to come with us for lunch? I mean, I know you don't really eat lunch and spend most of your time somewhere else, but are you sure you're not going to eat? I mean, look at you. You're fat, I can see you're aching to get some donuts down, yeah. Your eye twitched from her words. You have no idea if it was out of concern for your well-being or if she's trying to bring you down. Either way, it stuck you. You wrapped your arms around yourself, your insecurity rising up to your throat, trying to suffocate you, fuck. Brittany! Who is it, bitch? It's Brittany, bitch! Then a new and familiar voice broke your inner turmoil. Oh, that's right. That's really insensitive of you. Imagine if someone else told you about how you look. Jericho Ichabod. Crow for short. Ah yes, Ichabod and Crow. And, what was his for? Crow? I already forgotten. Memory of an elephant, me. And many other characteristics too. If you see the size of my feet. The class representative and one of your close friends. Heck, <laughs> probably the only one of your friends that you really admire. And maybe you have a tiny little itty bitty tiny crush on. Brittany only huffed and looked away from Crow's spiteful gaze as he turned his attention to you. Crow gives you a small smile while handing something to you. You looked down to see it. It was your ID. You dropped this, by the way. You grabbed your ID and looked down to see. Your name is... Harry. Oh. <laughs> Your last name. Fuck! We're gonna go back. Can my last name be Hart? Uh. Katie. <laughs> someone, someone in my stream. I'm so sorry. I don't remember who it was. I, you know, memory of an elephant, you know, hung like a, you know. Someone said, like, as like when we were thinking about nicknames, because everyone calls me Beyond or Arcade. Someone was like, oh, Katie. And I was like, oh my God, that like awakens like the woman in me being called Katie, you know? So I was like, fuck yeah, Katie. The ID shows my name. Harry hearts Kate. Oh, wait, I've just made like a fanfic now. Harry loves Katie. Shh. Damn it. Along with my pronouns. She, her, hers. He, him, his. They, them, theirs. He, him, his. He, him, his, him, him. You look down at the ID one more time to double check it's correct. Name, Harry loves Katie. Pronouns, he, him. Yes. You took your ID back from Crow and give him a small. Thank you. He gave you, <clears throat> why is he, he's giving me a lot right now. He's giving me like dummy vibes. He's giving me butler vibes. Like where's the wine homie? We've been set down for a while. 
He gave you a closed smile, muttering, no problem, as he went back to Brittany's side where the rest of his friends are. So are you coming with us or not? Brittany said clearly, getting impatient by the second, her hand on her hip while waiting for your response. You then decided to... Go to the roof- oh my god, it's a bit early for that kind of ominous- <laughs> ominous adventure, isn't it? Uh, yeah, let's be socialites. Brittany hummed a sound of contempt before turning her heel and heading towards the classroom's exit in tow with her and four other people, one being Crow. Oh, is she like- is she main- is she main mama? Does she command the herd? Crow looks back at you by the door, waiting for you. You caught up with them and your eyes met with Crow's once again. There was something in his gaze that sent a shiver down your spine. He was in heat. You quickly averted your eyes once you got out with Crow following behind you and that group heading towards the school's cafeteria. The cafeteria is loud. Students lined up to grab today's school lunch while the rest went to their table and packed their with their packed lunches. So, Harry, do you want to come with us to get school food for the day, or do you want to go and grab a table with the others? Brittany said her gaze fixated on you. Oh my god, who's the little, who's the little nervous orange? <laughs> who's the nervous orange, huh? We've heard of the annoying orange, now it's time for the socially awkward pair. Brittany along with Crow and a girl with an orange uniform seems to be grabbing school lunch. Meanwhile, the two guys with them have their own packed lunch, about to head out off to find a seat for the group. Is this like, is this gonna make a decision of who I'm gonna go to town with? You decided that you. Uh, if I'm being honest, I was eyeing up the, 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 the emo we dude on the right. We're gonna go have packed lunch with a, I'll introduce myself. <gasps> Brittany just shrugged. <sighs> All right, let's go jazz. She lined up with the rest of the students, the girl with the glasses following up behind her. That must be Jess. Usually I'm using my, my inductive, indicative, uh, Sherlock knowledge. You really need to recall who are the friends that you hang out with again. The girl with glasses, as you recalled when, as you recalled when Brittany mentioned her name, was Jess. Yeah, I've already made that ears. I've already, is she casting a spell? What is she doing? Plusing five mana. She's a big nerd and has a fondness for this idol named... Uh, what was his name again? Eros. Eres. Uh, whatever. You honestly don't care. She's really quite an attached to the hip towards Brittany. Like a dog. It's pathetic. You wonder why. Because she's a little hatchy. I'll go line up as well. You'll be fine with those too. Crow asked you with a concerned lace in his tone. You face the two other boys. One clearly talking the other male's ear. I love that we just address them as males. <laughs> one clearly talking the other male's ear off, whilst the other one doesn't really seem to give a damn, seemingly looking around the cafeteria as if searching for something. You nod your head to Crow and he gives you a pat on the head, a blush making its way to your cheeks before he went along with Brittany and Jess. Oh, sorry, I just had to crack my back because I'm like a hundred years old now. You then head off to where the two guys are, already seated on a table while bringing out their own packed lunch. Haha, <laughs> your food always looks so good, Joe. I bet they taste great. I skipped dialogue, can I go back? Shit, what is this? Damn, I can't read, I'm a job. Well, I don't think I did skip it, I think it's just bug. I think it's just bug bug. Mind if I... <laughs> no. Bitch. The guy named Geo said as he slapped the jock's hand away from his bento box. The jock pouted, rubbing his hands before taking out his own packed lunch. As you sat down across from the two boys, Geo kept his eyes on you for quite a while, not breaking his gaze whilst he chewed out his lunch. Oh my god, you're gonna be chewing me out, mother. I'm gonna be your lunch. A shiver went down your spine and a twinge in your crotch. The jock beside him somehow just remembered your presence on the table and turned his head towards you. Oh, right. Harry, right. <laughs> what did you bring for lunch? I mean, if you don't mind sharing that as... Ah, ha, ha, ha. Bruh, uh, both, uh, <laughs> 
Sorry, dude. I was thinking about football. Both on what is it? And if you mind sharing it with me, <laughs> I'm bulking, dude. I'm like this guy besides me. He's like a little twig, dude. Gio only rolled his eyes when the jock nudged his shoulder, letting out an irritated groan. <sighs> Don't bother with it, Daryl. I'll take your food either way. Even if you did give him some. Hey now. Hey now. While the two bicker on, you just give a small chuckle and ate your pack of lunch. Are we not even waiting for the homies? We're just gonna start nomming? How rude. Oh, are you raised by holes? In the corner of your eye, you noticed Brittany, Jess, and Crow with their lunch on their trays on the hand, heading towards where you are seated at. <laughs> Maybe your ass aside, Daryl. Da oh my goodness. That button is holding on for dear life. Holy. A loud gasp escaped through Brittany's lips. Which ones? <gasps> she queef. <laughs> she queef in the cafeteria. It's a new musical, by the way. You've heard of High School Musical. You've heard of Grease. Now let's get ready for queefing in the cafeteria. A loud gasp escaped through Brittany's lips, her mouth open in shock with the food that was now on her tray now splattered across her white uniform. Brittany! <laughs> Mean girl, oh my god, so many characters already. My voice box is not equipped for this many interactions of humans. <clears throat> um, sorry about that. <laughs> you should have been watching where you were going. Brittany's eyes met with the person responsible. A group of girls, definitely bullies, and judging from Brittany's face filled with rage, they seemed to know each other. <laughs> Brit, are, are you all right? We should get yourself clean. Here, let me just... <laughs> You fucking bitch! This is my only clean uniform. How fucking dare you? Every other one's covered in spum. <laughs> oh, and look at Miss Calera fired up. <laughs> Careful there, sweetie. You'll get wrinkles. <laughs> I mean, it's not like you're not ugly already. And by ugly, this is getting ugly quite fast. Everyone's gazes were on a group of girls, some taking up their phones, either taking pictures or started recording. Also known as motion pictures. They're taking gifts! Crow tried to come between them to stop the fight, but he wasn't fast enough. Splat. The next thing you knew, there was another loud gasp was heard. And a wide smile was on Brittany's face. The food on the mean girl's white uniform as well. Jess's face filled with shock as the food from her tray is gone. Oh, poor Jess. How are you going to feed the little puppy now? <laughs> Take that shit stain. How dare you? <laughs> food fight. The next thing everyone knows, the cafeteria is filled with rowdy students and food flying across the area. <gasps> Those trays. Oh, a sudden wave of pain was felt on your head. Your whole face. And the last thing you saw was Crow calling out your name before passing out. Did we get sideswiped? Oh, where am I? Oh, you're awake, thank goodness. Where am I? What the? F <laughs> are, we, are we an outlast? Oh, crow. You tried to sit up, but the sudden pain that went through your head stopped you. Crow gently pushed you back down on what seemed to be a bed. Before taking a seat beside it. I mean, just take a seat on it with me. I, I, in it, on you, in it, on, in you. <laughs> the nurse already bandaged your head. Don't push yourself. Oh, what happened? Well, after Daryl started that mess of a food fight, the principal was called in to stop it. And he asserted dominance by beating the fuck out of you and you took it like a champ. <laughs> Daryl got lucky enough to escape when he did. Geo was nowhere to be seen. As for Brittany, uh, what about her? Uh, well, Jess helped her out and grabbed a new uniform from the principal's office. Uh, then why does my head hurt so much? Uh, someone somehow threw a tray and you were ununfortunate enough to be hit by it. Thankfully, I got you out of there before it got ugly. Ah, uh, thanks, Crow. I owe you one. Mm, don't mention it. Anyway, it's quarter near one. Quarter near one? <laughs> anyway, it's quarter near one in the afternoon. I should probably head out to my next class. You should stay here until the nurse gets back. You'll be alright alone in here? No. 
Huh, yes, you can go ahead. Why have I given myself such like a beta male voice? <laughs> my beta male voice. That's just because I'm in the presence of an alpha and it just makes me, my knees buckle. <sighs> Are you sure? Yes, I'll be fine, Crow. You've done enough for me today. You gave him a small smile, but he did not return it. Crow then squeezed your hand, hesitant to let you go. Eventually, he loosened his grip, stood up, and walked towards the exit. What, no kiss? All right, fuck off then. I mean, frick off. <laughs> I need to get like a, a shock cough. Actually, no, that's the last thing I need to do is put a collar on myself and record it. I think that's the absolute last thing that I should be doing. You miss it as soon as he lets go. Oh my god, we're so, like, needy. But before he could leave, he turned around and gave you a small smile before closing the door to, of the infirmary. You groaned and lay back down on the bed, feeling the bandage on your head. <sighs> At least the pain is slowly dying a bit. I hope it didn't leave a mark on my head. And just then you heard the door open, the nurse's voice echoing through the room as the clicking of her heels gets louder as she drew closer. You're the school nurse? The school... Oh, okay, a student. I was going to say, you're the nurse? Holy... We are in a metal school. The school nurse entered, and following her was a tall student dressed in black. He seems to be holding onto his left hand, where you can clearly see a streak of red flowing. It was Kool-Aid. He didn't have a cup, and he was just... <laughs> sipping it from his hand. You should be thankful that they didn't cut a vein. How they were able to get past with that pocket knife in the first place. The nurse sighed. It seems like she's got her hands full with another student. The latter, however, didn't say anything, but he let out a small hiss when the nurse dabbed antibacterial on his wound. Could you imagine, like, unironically hissing at, like, a member of medical staff when they're trying to help you? Like, you can wince and be like, Ooh, ow. But, like, just like, Yeah, this might sting a bit. <laughs> you sat up slowly, careful to hit your head on anything else before sitting up, and you looked at the student and the nurse. Your eyes met with the reddish-orange ones as the nurse finishes wrapping up around his wound, a blot of red slowly seeping and staining the once white bandage. At least it matches his vibe now, you know. His eyes are still on you. Ah, oh, you're finally awake, Mr. Katie. The nurse finally notices your presence. She took out some painkillers from one of the cabinets and gave some to you. Take these to lessen the pain, and you are both free to get back to your class, or you can stay here and recover. Tar, tar. What do you sound like? Shy. That's like the dark. Okay. Oh my god, the key is around your neck. Are we gonna fucking? Do you have a chastity belt on? I'll go back. Thanks for patching me up, nurse. The boy said before heading out of the infirmary. The nurse just shook her head before returning her attention to you. You can take some extra pills, but not too much. You can come back here if you feel anything wrong, Mister Katie. Take care now. You thank the nurse before heading out of the infirmary and on to your next class. Ooh, so he's very omnibus, this, this orange, reddish eyed boy. You just barely made it to your next class, your professor already on his desk and was slowly bringing out their tools for the next lesson of the day. Tools? What? What tools do you have in like a standard classroom? The hell? You look across the room, paint brushes by the shelves, this week's featured artwork with a few blank canvases hidden in the shelf. You looked around the classroom before your eyes landed on familiar red ones. It's the guy from the clinic. How come I just noticed his presence just now? Has he always been a part of the same art class as me? And judging from his face, the bandage around his left hand doesn't seem to be much of a problem to him. You shook your head and took your seat. I'll be assigning each one of you a partner to work with for the upcoming weeks now. You and your partner will do three different artworks that will need to be submitted by the deadline. I hope you've already got a partner by this time. But you said you were a us partner. How are you? What do you mean, Professor? Now, I want you to go to your designated partners before I start explaining your tasks. Shit. <sighs> you mumbled under your breath. This is what I get for not attending his class last time. You don't have a partner. You panicked as you looked around trying to spot some loner or some unfortunate soul like you who wasn't able to attend last time. But from the looks of it, it seems everyone is already partnered up. Just great. You were forced out of your seat since your seatmate's partner will be occupying it for the class. Unlike the rest of the class scurrying around to meet their partner, there wasn't one who was moving from his seat. There was one who wasn't moving from his seat. Man, I could read today. 
You went to where he was situated, and he seems to be reading a book. You let out a small cough to catch his attention. <coughs> Sorry, huh? He closed his book and looked up at you. Looked up at you. Seems like you're a bit lost there. Uh, do you have a partner? Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> well, just your luck. <laughs> Me neither. So, do you want to be partners? Sure, <sighs> why not? You took the vacant seat right beside him. His book now tucked away, and on his desk is now a pen and a piece of paper, seemingly ready to take notes. Hey, I, uh, I, I never got your name. <sighs> it's not quite important. Oh, well, I mean... I mean, I should at least know what to call you instead of green streaked hair guy. Daddy, does that work? Colored one. Chastity boy with your little key. Anything? <clears throat> he raised a brow to a silly nickname you gave him before slightly shaking his head. Solivan Bruggs Mass Hadia. But you can just call me Sol, thank goodness otherwise i would just call you daddy out of just embarrassment of not being able to read international soul soul means sun or brightness right your name contradicts with your whole glam i'm not gonna lie yeah you know what when you're in school you bully someone you want to bone so wait i just admit it i just self-reported <laughs> Soul looked away scratching his cheek <laughs> which one uh, guess so uh... hmm not really the Jolly type. Hayoko is more of that. <laughs> well, I'm Harry Loves Katie. Why did I... Why are we going on, like, full name basis? This never happens in school. You're just like, oh, yeah, dude, I'm Harry. What up? You know? And it's like... <laughs> I'm not like, my name is Harry Williamson Katie. First of his kind and name. I'll just unplug. Something, something bad happened. Well, I'm Harry Katie. Nice to finally know your name, Sol. Sol nodded with a small smile before returning his attention back to the professor. For this term, I want you and your partner to pass three. Ow, that was my face. Three art pieces. The first one to be a portrait of your partner strictly on paper with charcoal as a medium. You groaned. <sighs> Boomer art teachers. Let me draw hentai, professor. God, you're so like behind on the times. Let me draw a lolly bitch spread in a kimbo. Your professor then proceeds to give you two other tasks before leaving you and the rest of the class to do your task for the day. Everyone started talking with their partners, some taking out their needed materials as the other one poses. Chink, you know? Wait, are we just like... I guess we're, I guess you kind of have to take turns. What a weird art class. You return to Sol as he took out his own charcoal pencil and his sketch pad the class uh, i gotta tell you right now soul i'm not that good at art pretty great at art um why is there no like middle ground oh i see what stopped working it was uh <laughs> it was my other camera <laughs> okay saved we're back welcome um yeah there's no middle ground um i'm pretty good at art <clears throat> oh and surprise me Sorry, I can't draw you back because of this damned injury. <laughs> no, don't worry about it. You're excused, and I don't want you to stress your hand over this. You know? You took out your sketch pad and your pencil and worked his portrait with a determination, his eyes never leaving your face. You would often look up to see his features taking note of every curve. A blush occasionally invades his cheeks as he tries his best not to look away whilst you work. While you are sketching up, you can't help but avert your eyes onto his bandaged hand from time to time. Seems like you're quite curious to know what happened with this, huh? And you weren't even slick with it either. You froze when he caught you red-handed, just like the red seeping out of his hand. You stopped drawing. <sighs> Sorry, that was rude of me. Uh, it's fine. Just the usual for me. I've gotten worse injuries than this. Got hit by an 18-wheeler just last week. It was epic. 
Nurse didn't know what to do about that one. You raised a brow at that. Not the worse. It's t <laughs> if you don't mind me asking, what happened? He paused and averted his eyes, but opened them to speak. <sighs> Nothing much. I, I was minding my own business and got assaulted. Had to defend myself. He talked as if it's another normal Monday for him. Your eyes furrowed and he noticed and just chuckled. <laughs> no need to worry about me. I mean, all that matters is I'm still here. Yeah, deep. <laughs> you didn't say anything, however, continuing on with the drawing, your movement slow and now refusing to look at his injured hand. This school is way more fucked up than I thought it would be. The bell rang and sadly you weren't done with his portrait yet. Can I see it? Wait! Uh, I mean, it, it, it's not finished yet. I'll show it to you once once I'm done with it. Plus, you, I still need you to draw me once your injury gets better. You close your sketch pad, fixed your things. Sol shrugged and agreed as he fixed his own thing. The rest of the class went out of the classroom along with you and Sol as you continued on in the hallway. Do you have a phone? We should exchange numbers and update each other so we can do the next two more tasks. Saul then takes out his own phone and asks you for your number. He recited as he inputted it on his phone. <sighs> Let me try and, like, send you a message. Just like, fucking. <laughs> he just turns around and just like, Oh, yeah. That's good shit. He nodded and looked down at your phone screen and saw a new notification from an unknown number. This must be Saul's. Oh, it must be. Saw. Saw. You type so different from how you look. He said one word. <laughs> What's that supposed to be? Nothing. You chuckled. He rolled his eyes. You're a good guy, so. So how about we hang out again tomorrow? <sighs> By your request, Sol's eyes widened in disbelief. He lets out a breath that he was somehow holding before sighing. Oh. <laughs> Uh, of course. I'll see you tomorrow, then. Fuck. You nodded and walked off, giving him a wave goodbye, him returning with his own small wave. As you walked through the hallway, your eyes caught on something on, near on a nearby bulletin board. A poster was plastered on the large board. The Hallows Ball. School Large Hall in Court. Free entry. October 31st, 2000XX begins at 8 p.m. Lorem Ipsum is simply dummy text in printing typesetting industry. Lorem Ipsum has been the standard dummy text ever since the 1500s when an unknown printer took a gallery of type and T to make a type specimen book. It has P. <clears throat> I think they copy pasted the wrong part of the Lorem Ipsum dollar <laughs> paragraph. Anyway, <laughs> Halloween party, huh? Just like my full brain resets, apparently. By the time you arrived at your small apartment, it was already past 5 p.m. You stretched your arms out and then had a small groan. Ah! You locked your doors and decided to just order takeout for dinner. Why would you lock your doors first if you're just going to be opening whatever? You went to your living room and plopped down a fat, juicy, lumping steamer on the couch and then took out your phone. Scrolling through until a ping notified you of a new message. Daryl sends me the Hallows Ball JPEG. <laughs> Anyone you want to go to the Halloween party with this Friday? It's going to be awesome, dude. Oh, it's a group chat. I've never been a part of one of these. I didn't know how they worked. <laughs> Aren't we all like a little too old for costume parties? <sighs> Is it required? I just realized Geo... I still have the same vibes. We gotta switch it up. What else do emo sound like? What does corpse have? To do? It's just really deep, right? Is it required? Is it required? Is it required? 
Ah, <laughs> you two are no fun at all, ha. Huh? I hope. I won't go to the school if it's not a school. I won't go if it's not a school required. Much less a waste of my time. Ta. As a. It'll be a great and fun experience for all of us. I mean, we should all loosen up a bit, you know. I, I, I agree with the crow. Count me in. Oh, pies. I've got more important things to do than that party. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll be doing my leftover tasks for tonight. Geo has got my fly. <laughs> Sheesh. Uh, so just stick in the mud as usual. Hi. What about you, Harry? Me? <laughs> me? <laughs> you join in? Uh, it'll be fun as... Uh, you were honestly surprised how they somehow remembered you. Why am I in the group chat anyway, then? <laughs> Checking your calendar through your phone, you didn't seem to have any plans in the near future. Or plans at all. You'd just like to spend your time in your apartment alone. Wait, we're in school and we have our own, like, apartment? Jesus Christ, what year is this, like, the 1950s when everything was cheap as chips? I mean, sh sure. Hmm, that's great to hear. Crow seemed happy about it. Hmm, you giggled. <laughs> This also reminded you of something. Or rather, someone. Opening another chat, you tapped into Sol's newly added contact and sent him a message by sending him the image of the same poster Daryl sent. <laughs> a Halloween party hosted by the school? <laughs> yeah. I'm not really into party. Oh. Oh, well, that's all right. I was just asking. That's all. By the way, Sol is typing. Wait. If you're coming, <laughs> then I'm coming as well. We're cum squared, baby. Me and you. <gasps> really? <laughs> really? Do you plan on dressing up? I don't know. Do you? I mean, it's a custom party, so like, why not? Okay. I'll like try to think of something then. You swear you can feel a smile behind those words. Ew. With a quick word of goodbye, you set your phone down and then you heard your doorbell. That must be the food delivery. I'm so glamorous. Afterwards, you ate your dinner and prepared yourself for bed. You've even got an apartment with a double bed in it. How? You're like in high school, motherfucker. How much money do you make? <laughs> and me oh, wait, I skip. I skip. Um... You thought of today and the events that occurred. And meeting Soul, of course. He's a really nice guy. It's no wonder how I've never met him despite sharing a single class with him. Oh well. You entered into your bedroom, laying a, letting out a big yawn as you stretched your body. Every orifice was gaping. You turn into your laundry. You turn into your laundry. <laughs> you just be going, poof, you're a fucking t-shirt. You turn, you turn to your laundry, slowly piling up. And scratch your head. I'll probably do the laundry tomorrow. But for now, you plopped yourself into the soft cushions of your bed, getting into a comfortable position and slowly dozing off as you closed your eyes, embracing the sleep as the night goes. What, we're not even gonna jerk it, do you? We're not even gonna zerk off? And this maiden, she lived with no other thought than to love and be loved by me, the one who loves. I was a child. She was a child. Thank goodness. <laughs> In this kingdom by the sea. Day two. The kingdom. The sun setting on the horizon colors the grassy field into a deep golden orange as the wind made some strands of hair brush across your face. <laughs> your ever beloved home. The tall grass, the fresh air, the various farm animals that you and your family raised since you were there. Since you were there, well, I would I would hope that you were there if you were raising them. Otherwise, you'd be like my father. And you weren't there. Weren't dead. <laughs> but your ever beloved home, the tall grass, the fresh air, the various farm animals that you and your family raised since you were a but a mere child. You can't even imagine what was happening before you right now as a group of people came whilst they were talked to your father. You know what? I also come when I talk to father uh, daddies. You know. <laughs> Your only family member left. Oh, okay, this is getting depressing. <laughs> Zip it on the cum jokes. <laughs> it's time to get emotional. 
Speaking of MMO, don't you get emotional after you know it's just, <laughs> just me. Just what has happened with you see the distress in your father's eyes as he tries his best to negotiate with the people before him. The desperation in his voice, the sweat running down his neck as he moves around his hand, gesturing this and that. Please, just give me more time. I promise I can pay you. This is all we have left. I don't know where else to go if we lose this farmland. We've given you enough chances already, Mr. Kate. If you don't pay up your debt, we will take your land. Hmm, business. Wait, why is there an apartment? <laughs> hold up, well, hold the phone. Why is there an apartment on farmland with our father? Is it just like translation issue? Is it like a is it like a family home? And we just have a boudoir. A boudoir. The loud ringing of the school bell ran across the hallway, making you jerk out of your thoughts. Students came through the classroom doors. You feel someone shaking you awake. You sat up and met face to face with Crowy. Crowy. Well, good morning, Sleeping Beauty. You let out a yawn, rubbed your eyes, and looked around. Your fellow classmates are now gone from their seats, as it is now lunchtime. Uh, <sighs> Nothing important. Though, if you're having any doubts, I can lend you my notes after. And just choke on my own saliva, because you just make me so... moist and tent up. Uh, thanks, Crow. You're a lifesaver. I took too long to read, and now the audio is gone, and it won't loop. Now we sit here in awkward silence. <sighs> Anything for you, Harry? You record a little dream you had. You quickly shake it off as you let out a stretch, popping a few joints before you got up and went out of the classroom with Crow and Toe. <sighs> you met up with a group of your friends, seeing Daryl with Geo and Crow waiting by the lockers, Brittany coming along behind them, and Jess. You waved at them. A so -so. Oh, quite a colourful squad we got in it. Ah, <laughs> oh, good noon to all. Hey, good night. Yeah, bah, 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 bah. <sighs> Regards, Daryl. How is class? <laughs> boring and uh, boring. <laughs> so glad to be out of there. One more useless miner and I'll be out of here. Useless miner? <laughs> what about Jess? Am I right? <laughs> ah! Geo shrugged, a hand in his hoodie pocket whilst the other one on his phone. We... 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 Oh, I can't speak in front of people. We got to do at least something in our major today, though, which I'm, I'm glad about. <laughs> More papers, but at least it was something. <laughs> Enough about papers. How about the Halloween party? Any ideas for a costume yet? <laughs> As they talked with each other, at the corner of your eye, you noticed a familiar figure. It was Sol, and he came out of the classroom, and another person came afterwards behind him, seemingly bored out of his mind. Join Sol, call Sol over, stay with the group. Call Sol, let's get a mess, make it a fucking orgy. Come on, baby. Without much thought, you walked to where Sol... When I walked to where... Wait, I thought I called them over. Wow, <sighs> whatever. It's the same difference. Without much thought, you walked to where Sol was, and he almost immediately noticed you, a smile appearing on his face. His companion noticed his change in attitude and turned to you. Hiago. Oh, you are the famous Hiago that I've heard so much about. Hi there, <laughs> you friends with Sunny? S Sunny? <laughs> Sunny! He gave Sol a pat on the back, and with a smile on his face, Sol was unamused as he tried his best to hide his red face behind his hands. Yeah, you know, because he's such a sunshine. He's sunny. Fun fact, I was going to be called Sunny. That was going to be my name. I'm glad it wasn't. <laughs> you giggled looking over at Sol, his bright red face covered by his hand while he looking away. Like a uh, nickname? <laughs> yeah, Sunny loves the nickname I gave you. Right, Sunny? Sol didn't say anything. He just looked away and refused to meet your gaze. <laughs> That's adorable. Piago was a bit silent, but he seemed to be analysing your face, his head tilting slightly to the side before a smile appeared on his face. Yeah, <laughs> you sure have taste, Sonny. He's very pretty, like you said. 
Fuck me. <clears throat> Sol just gave him a dark look, telling him to not even try and go there. A blush escaped your cheeks at the gesture. <laughs> anyway, it's nice to meet you. My name's Piago. I'm Sol's friend. Harry, pleasure to meet you too. He shakes your hand with a smile on his face. Then you hear a group of footsteps behind you. Tiago first noticed the group behind you as he raised his head to meet one of their gazes. <laughs> there you are, Harry. You just ran off like that. I kind of got worried. Yeah, you with these people, Harry? Oh, that's right. <laughs> Sorry for running off like that. Um, yeah. Soul, Tiago, these are my friends. You turned your body to face Crow and the others while your gaze is still fixed on the duo. How does that work? So you just turn your body and your face with your eyes are just like, oh, huh, what do you mean? Crow gives the two a smile and a small wave. <clears throat> Daryl came up first, extending his hand for one of the two to take. Ah, nice to meet you. I'm Daryl. And if you haven't heard yet, I'm an ace of our school's football team. He said with a smile, Hugo took his hand with a shake. Following up is Brittany as she just stares with her hand on her hip while Jess was twiddling her fingers as she stuck close to Brittany's side. Hey. How's it going? Hi, hello. Between Brittany, Jess, and Daryl, it seems that only is the most... It seems that only is the most enthusiastic of them all. What? Between Brittany, Jess, and Daryl, it seems that only is the most enthusiastic out of all of them in this newfound friendship. Is that English or am I stupid? <laughs> seems that only was the enthusiastic one. I love only. He's my favorite. I'm Hyago. I've heard about you, Daryl. Nice to meet you too. Thankfully, Hyago returned the same energy as the jock. I'm Jericho, but people call me Crow. Nice to make your acquaintance. Duh. Crow also handed out his hand for Sol to shake. However, Sol did not take it. <gasps> Ega. There was a slight awkwardness in the air between the two males, making Crow slowly retrace his hand back. <laughs> no way. The atmosphere between the two, however, was cut short when Hyago gave out a loud gasp and marched towards Gio, who was way behind the group, a visible scowl on his face. Gio's eyes darkened as he tried to step back, but Hyago was quick on his feet and he engulfed the taller male into a hug. See, now I want I want everyone to know that I expressed a good foresight there, and I didn't I didn't try and read it with a bunch of potentially racially charged sounding syllables. That's what Google thinks. Subaru. Long time no see. I didn't want to see your ugly face the entire day. No. The entire semester. <laughs> but my luck seems to be slipping. Hey <laughs> now. I've forgotten his wife. Fuck, I've forgotten. Oh, it's been five seconds. Hey <laughs> now. That's not a nice way to greet your brother. Another loud gasp was heard. <gasps> this time it came from Daryl. He points at Gio quite dramatically. <gasps> You have a brother, Gio! Oh, great, another one. That's big, brother to you. Everyone's attention was now on the three of them, Brittany seemingly amused by Gio's newfound dilemma. Crow just chuckled while Jess was surprised as well. Hyogo finally started letting go of Gio, the said male cursing under his breath as he composed himself, and now fixed his ruffled hair as he walked towards you. I'll be fixed in my... Hold up. Hot boys fix their hair, you know. <laughs> we were actually going up to the rooftop for lunch today. We were hoping that you would like to come with us. This was not your voice, but I've forgotten the other one, so... We're going with it. He says now standing beside Sol. Sol looks at you with anticipation. You. Join Sol and Hugo stay with the group. Um... We're gonna join Seoul. I mean, sure. Oh, but I need to tell the others first if that's okay. Hmm, <laughs> sure thing. Take your time. Thanking and excusing yourself from the duo, you turn to the group, specifically Crow. Nervousness suddenly engulfed you as you tapped the blue eyed male on the shoulder. 
Crow tilted his head and turned his full attention toward you. Um, is it alright for me to come with them for today? <laughs> I'm fine with it, Harry. Oh, he paused as if he suddenly remembered something. But you have to ask Brittany for that as well. Why do I have to ask permission to eat lunch with you? What are you talking about? What? what are, you, are we in a cult? Upon hearing her name, Brittany turned her head towards you. You noticed a basket around one of her arms. Brittany, however, didn't give you a chance to ask. <laughs> you can go ahead, Harriet. You can just join us whenever you want to. She gives you a sort of smile, surprising you a little bit. Without further ado, you excuse yourself from the group before going with Sol and Hyago. Hyago gives you a smile. You turn to Sol. He gives you a smile of his own, his shoulders relaxed, as if relieved. <laughs> Let's go then. Ha, I feel like an announcer for a football Japanese tournament arcade machine. Offside! Hugo walked towards his usual spot and got himself seated on the bench that you somehow never saw before. Sol followed, a large wrapped box in his hands that caught your interest. Sit beside Sol, sit in between them, sit beside Hugo. Sit beside Sol, of course, he's our... He's our current, you know, our current MO. Our current MO! Sol noticed you from the corner of his eye, the edges of his lips going upward. Some may call it a smile. You'd pointed to the box nestled in Sol's hand. Is that your lunch, Sol? Yeah, you can say that. As Sol unwrapped the cloth, it shows you three bento boxes. He takes out the first bento box on top before giving the other one to Hyogo. Hyogo happily accepted the box, uttering a small thank you to Sol before taking out chopstick. Hyogo opens the container and lets out an odd sound. His eyes sparkling, draw slowly drops down from the corner of his lips. <laughs> you actually listen, uh, listen, you actually listen. Yeah, <laughs> you actually listen, and did you cut these tiny sausages into octopuses? Octopussy? Uh, keep your voice down. It's ringing in my ear. <laughs> Wait, I'm taking a picture of that. Yogo gently placed the bento on his lap before rummaging around his phone. He flipped it horizontally and opened his phone's camera. A small click of the camera's sound was heard before he placed it down. Yogo took the container back into his hands, but not before turning to you and showing you what he kept gushing about. Oh my. Oh, look at this. It's like a loaf thing where's the oh i see the octopus little things oh that's cute isn't it adorable harry <laughs> there you see various ranges of food rice shaped to match a moth a seaweed designed face along with it, it was using cabbage leaf to form its wings a moth is a strange one there's a hair floating how dare you did i give it's this this is a no fly zone right below the moth are mini sausages shaped like octopuses. Wonderfully cut carrots made to look like stars. I see them, they're very cute. And squeezed beside stuffed... Shiitake? <laughs> stuffed shit take mushrooms. And the egg roll sushi and broccoli with melted cheese as a dip looked delicious. <laughs> I almost feel too bad to eat it. Salami. Without wasting another second, Hiago started to dig in. <laughs> Did you make this by yourself, Sol? <sighs> you can say that. Can you stop being such a cryptic, cryptic asshole? Did can you cook? Yes or no? Also, where's your bandage? Surely that didn't heal up in a day. Sol answered, opening his own container. Within it was just a regular ham and cheese sandwich. He took out one piece, but before he could take a bite, he turned to you. Have you... <coughs> have you eaten, Harry? No, I haven't, actually. The lunch bell just rang and we bumped into each other as we left our classrooms. And you've been with me ever since. Does it look like I've eaten yet, Sol? No, I haven't. Sol's eyes went wide and Hugo gave you a look. Before you knew it, Sol took out another box. The last better box before giving it to you. <laughs> you can have this then. It's extra. Why Why do you have extra? I didn't like how this looked, but I figured I can let Hiago finish it. It's a waste of ingredient. <clears throat> you, you don't have to, so really. I'll go hungry. No, it's, I, I insist. Oh, for fuck's sake. Just eat the same box. 
eat my box. Hugo clearly had enough of the back and forth banter suggested before continuing on his box. Sol hesitated at first. He eventually took out a spoon and a fork and handed out one for you. Take a bite from the bento box, tease him. Oh, we gotta tease him. You decline his offer of the utensils, making him raise a brown confusion. Oh, he gets pretty close. You don't want the spoon, or do you prefer chopsticks? <sighs> Nothing of the sort. You then grab his hand, make him pick up the food, and then you just make him place it in your mouth, but you suck too hard with hot fingers. Mm, you taste lovely. Oh, nothing of the sort. Uh, then what is it? Oh my god, I was joking. <laughs> I was making a joke, but I am apparently am psychic. I want you to feed me. That nearly took soul out. Hugo gave you side eye, bomb. Bastard side eye, and a judgmental look on his face as he stopped eating. He scooted a bit away from the two of you before returning to his meal. Sol, however, was nervous for a bit, but his eyes still transfixed on yours. Still couldn't believe what he had just heard. Are you gonna keep staring at him or what? Shut up. I'll feed him. Sol gripped the spoon on his hand, taking a few pieces from the bento box before turning to you. There's no way this would actually work in real life, by the way. This way, I this is crazy. <laughs> his eyes averted away from you, a wild blush on his face as he raised the spoon to your face. His hand was shaking a bit, seemingly nervous. You took a bite and chewed. You felt the flavors mixing well. It was delicious and fresh. It was amazing. So very, really good. Hugo nodded along with you. Food stuffed in one cheek like a hamster. Does he know right? <laughs> You'd honestly be surprised. So, making lunch for Hugo? You'd make a great house husband. <laughs> Sol's eyes widened at your declaration. Ah, uh, you really think so? I really do think so. Ah, uh, hey, hey, I was trying to read that fucker. Sol is definitely a house husband material, Harry. He can cook, he can clean, he can do anything but make me cream. I'd rather not be your personal butler. <laughs> that was a compliment. The two banter, but you couldn't help but looking at Sol, his eyes have a hint of sparkle in it. It seemed brighter. Then Sol was quiet, his eyes in a daze as if he was lost in thought. This caught your attention, tilting your head to the side as you called out his name. Sol? You okay there? What? Oh, uh, I I'm fine, Harry. Perfectly fine. But there was a bit of hesitation in his voice. Like, um, you said something, so? Did you speak up? He cleared his throat, his back straightened, and his eyes closed. <sighs> that person. The one with the braids? Person? Does he mean... Crow? You mean Crow? For a split second, his uh, gaze darkened. Yeah, yo, yeah. home. Can I ask you something? This confused you a bit. Ooh, what kind of person asks questions? What a freak. <gasps> what made him interested all of a sudden? And towards Crow, nonetheless. Maybe he would like to know more about him? Crow is known to be very friendly. <laughs> sure, well, what is it you'd like to ask me? D do you like him? Your heart dropped and you nearly choked on your own spit. <laughs> no! What makes you say that? You nervously laughed. <laughs> Nothing of the sort. <laughs> there was a hesitate. There was a hesitant. Hesitance? There was hesitance in his eyes, unsure whether to believe you or not. Wanting to change the subject before he gets any more suspicious, you blurted out. Uh, uh, how about you, soul? Surely there is someone that you like. He smirked. Then the grin he makes as he teases. He smirked. The grin he makes when he teases makes it its way up to his ever handsome face. Oh, why? You interested? 
<laughs> oh, I'm so wrecked. A wild blush erupted from your face as you tried to diffuse this topic. Soul chuckled as you stammered and fidget his gaze softly. <laughs> so cute. Uh -huh. Hugo eventually finished his own box, tucking away the box and wrapping it back up. Box, 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 box. Hugo stood up from the bench, stretched his limbs, and walked a few steps ahead and looked back at the both of you. Is, is this what you guys do every day? You questioned, making Hugo turn to you. Or uh, at least when you both get together. Oh, what do you mean? <laughs> you mean Sol giving me lunch? Yeah, he just like forgets to bring his own. Hugo pouts. <laughs> and you never finish yours, so I do the honors of finishing good food. Thank you very much. Those bento box art. What inspired them, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, you didn't know? <laughs> Shut it, go go. Go go go? Oh, <laughs> we're just using nicknames now, Sonny. How sweet of you. <laughs> you see here, Harry, my old pal, my old buddy, my old mate. My old pal here just makes food art like the typical artist that he is. <laughs> here come, stop right now. Don't ruin the recording. Epic. <clears throat> but he never bothers to finish it, much less eat it. But he really loves cute things, like... Hugo turned back to Sol. Sol just stared back at him, his arms crossed. What was the name of that plushed horse, Sonny? <laughs> like, how am I answering that? <laughs> Boo. He uh, owns a plush horse. Sol owns plushies. By now, Sol's face is a beet red as he ties the bento boxes back up. He stood up from his seat before going over to where Hyago was. You stood up as well and followed along the duo. <laughs> That's so cute. You just keep surprising me more and more, Sol. He said nothing as he fixed his choker, the red going up to his ears at your compliment. <laughs> Looks can be deceiving. This begs you to wonder, why do people never bother to notice him? Why would, don't people want to get to know him? Maybe they just never gave him a chance because of how he looks, not to mention his intimidating height. Oh my god, is he 6'4? Oh my god, my panties just hit the floor! But by the end, he's just a gentle giant. Oh, we love it, don't we? He's like the iron giant. But he does look like he's got a bit of an iron deficiency, so maybe not. <laughs> he's the iron deficient giant! <laughs> By then, Hyago stopped talking, the wind picking up a bit as he went to the railings. He leaned in and placed his elbows on the cold iron surface as he looked down. Curious, you approached him and looked down to where his attention was. And there you see a group of unfamiliar people. They look fancy. They look rich. Dangerous. It doesn't help that the adult with them, you're guessing a teacher, has an eye patch on his right eye. <gasps> High class mug. So let out a disgusted look at the group of well dressed students. He didn't spare a second glance and went back to the bench. High class? Yeah. <laughs> you don't know about the hierarchy, Harry? No, no, no. Like, not, not that I'm not aware of, but. This is the first time I've ever heard of them. How come I've never heard or seen one of them throughout my school years here? Hugo just made a low chuckle, his gaze still transfixed on the group below him. His eyes narrowed just like Sol, so he clearly doesn't like them either. <laughs> I don't blame you. No one likes talking about them anyway. Ooh, little, little, little admission! High class. About the hierarchy. How come I've never heard about the hierarchy before? Duh, it's like a hidden thing. But that's what we call it. The school. No. The entire city. It's like a fighting pit. Whoever's the most powerful has a better chance in living a good life here. People come to this school to gain a second chance in life, but to achieve that you have to make yourself well known. Make them think you're worth their time. If you're not, you're on your own. Hi, class. He glares at the group below. <sighs> the school building isn't actually the real thing. Wait, what? But, but the school map clearly says that the addresses, that's where they actually fool you. You might think you've got it right, but we're actually sorted based on our background. 
the real school building, way farther than where we are, and their campus is ten times bigger and better. They get proper classes, have better equipment, everything is just better. Here, we only get the short end of the stick. The afterthought, if you will. I, I have to guess that the well-off are in the main building? <laughs> That's right. Son of Duke, daughter of a businessman. Hey, as long as you're rich, you're in. <clears throat> Your chances for having a better education rests there. If you are part of the high class, then you have a better chance of having a successful and stable life. But don't we have students here who are like super rich? You remember Jess being one. She is the daughter of a businessman, but how come she's not part of the higher class? There are some who got shifted down, ended up moving into our building. <clears throat> Either they failed a class or got a violation. But they didn't want that type of stain on their reputation, so they sent them here. Of course, some didn't appreciate that. They see us as someone lower than them. Hence, Hugo looks at Sol. The said man too busy sketching on his sketch pad to notice. Oh, they have to fight the weak to feel something, huh? They sound like nothing but bullies. How, how come someone didn't step up to complain? Hugo Haver just laughed as if you told him a very funny joke before shaking his head. <laughs> if only it was that easy. His laugh eventually died down as he scratched his head. Actually, Harry, in this city, <laughs> no one really gives a shit. Money is the only thing that revolves around this city. You got no cash, you're done for. You're done. Which is why people like us, he looks at you, are desperate to get into the higher class. If you so dare complain, he paused as if contemplating the words he was about to say. Judging from his entire demeanor, it's not good. Instead, he sent you a look. His once soft, sky blue eyes are now sharp, like icicles piercing down on you. You're better off dead. Hugo glanced one last time below. The group of high-class students are now gone before averting his gaze on somewhere else. He lets out a sigh. <sighs> but that's the sad reality here. The attention is good. Great even. Your chances to get a stable life and even have a knock to stardom is high once you're part of the high class, much less graduate there. I have nothing else to ask. <laughs> the city is corrupted. He muttered under his breath. Which makes me question, Harry. How were you able to get into the city? No, the better question is, why did you enroll in this school, if you don't mind me asking, that is? You're clearly not from here. And that he was right. Your eyes widened at the words that that well-dressed man said. No, no, I refuse. But you're not taking this farm. This farm is my home. You cut your father's words off, marching towards the tall man with a loud, heavy footsteps. The tall man, however, raised a brow at you, raising his hand to halt his men. His deep magenta eyes then turned to look straight into your eyes. It sent a chill down your spine. Well then, little mister, how about this? If you try, if you manage to pay off your debt in the next five years, I'll let you keep, I'll let you off the hook. And you can keep your lay. Five years? For four hundred thousand pounds? I can handle that. Maybe working three jobs would do it for you. Ah ha! He tutted, waving a finger in front of your face. He looks down at you, reminding you of your place. A mischievous smile appears on his handsome features. Why do we just want to bang every dude in this game? Literally, this dude is like literally demeaning us, and we're like, oh, you're so hot. Tell me you're gonna take my house away. But I have some conditions you have to meet. You went silent. Your heart starts pounding in your chest as you kept eye contact with his sharp magenta orbs. I want you to stay in the city. The, the city? But we can't even afford to take him to college. What more about the city? Your father interrupted. The man's eyes moved sideways to meet his, his figure still fixed on you. <laughs> no need to worry. He'll be under my jurisdiction, of course. I'll provide for his education and a place to stay. The tall man lets out a laugh, his head thrown a bit back as he just heard a, as if he had just heard a funny joke. That's why we've got an apartment. We've got some weird, like, pay pig situation going on. <laughs> See, I'm not that cruel. His eyes return to you. However, in return, I want you to pay off your debt. 
I don't care what method, only fair. Twitch.tv forward slash beyond the arcade. Drug selling, ass slinging. I couldn't think of any other. <laughs> a dark smile appeared on his face and sent a shiver down your spine. Legal or illegal, human trafficking, I don't care. As long as you reach the amount. If not, well, <laughs> you can say goodbye to your little farmland. He says that, but there was a gleam in his eye that tells you that that's not all. But he didn't elaborate any farther. You bite your lip. You turn to look at your father. His eyes were clearly telling you to decline. There was something about this man that screams dangerous. But you were too desperate to lose your home. Your only home. So, what do you say, Harry? The tall man's gaze still fixed on you, waiting for an answer. Do you accept? I think we did. You recall the aftermath of your dream this morning, a sour look on your face as you bit your lip. Tiago takes notice of this. He paused for a bit, trying to read your gloomy expression. <laughs> Let me guess. Let me... <laughs> Let me guess. Something you can't avoid. I, I honestly don't know. My father never really disclosed why we were in debt. But I was so desperate to not lose my only home. I need to make it up to the higher class. I need to make it up to the higher class, no matter what. We didn't, we just, we only just found out about the higher class. Three jobs isn't cutting off the way I want it to be. I'm running out of time. This is my last year in this cursed university and I'm barely making any progress. Hugo's eyes are still on you. You realize you haven't answered his question yet. My uh, family owns a business. You finally speak, making Hugo perk his eyebrows up in curiosity. What sort of business does your family have? Uh, well, we uh, own a few farms. <laughs> Sounds nice. I'd love to be out of the city once in a while. He gave you a small smile. <laughs> yeah, some say it's boring, but it's not. Get to pet horses and cows. <laughs> well, you should really invite Soul over it then, if ever. <laughs> Winky face. That guy loves horses. And he loves something about horses, you know, it just kind of... You know what I'm saying? Five-legged creatures, they say. That means you're a long way from home. Don't you miss it? A little bit. <laughs> That's all right. It's normal to feel homesick. Don't worry, it's only been four years. I've kind of gotten over it. <laughs> I heard great things about this city, uh, about this school. Hugo remained quiet listening to you as you went on. If I can manage to come out on top and maybe be a part of the higher class like you said, then maybe I can save my family's farm. Hugo's arms are now closed. He didn't say anything as he still looked at you. He lets out a chuckle. <laughs> you remind me of him. Uh, like him? Ah, I'm rambling. <laughs> Don't mind me. <laughs> Having been caught red-handed, he waved around his hands, his face now red as a cherry as it reached his ears. Just then you felt a presence behind you. Turning around, you're met with soul. His glare is st Dinging and directed at Hugo. Hyago. Sorry, I'm going. <laughs> the shorter male, however, didn't mind it. Probably used to it. It was almost time. We should head back. I think that was Sol. Never mind. <laughs> all right, all right. With nothing else to do, the three of you left the rooftop. As you were walking down the stairs, however, you felt your foot slip off. You missed a step. <laughs> Harry! <laughs> Thankfully, Sol grabbed your waist before you could fall onto the stairs as he steadied you. Fuck! <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> you all right there, Harry? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, thank you, Sol. <sighs> Be careful next time. Or just give me another reason to grab your waist. <sighs> Sheesh, this school and its bath architecture. Also, one of those few floors here. The stairs are all wonky. <sighs> it's also why it's forbidden to go up here. <laughs> We're troublemakers, though. Hugo chuckled as we went down the stairs, watching his step as he... Uh, watching his step as he did so. Sol's arm still secured around my waist. It's been 30 minutes now, Sol. You can let off, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> and it seems like he wasn't letting go of you until you were on stable ground. Oh, fuck. The sound of the bell ringing throughout the hallway echoes through, signaling the start of the next classes for some... Hugo grunts. <laughs> I don't want to go to class. I hate my history teacher as much as my archery coach. 
And you're saying you're not high class? You do fucking archery? What the fuck? <laughs> Why don't you skip then? Hugo's eyes popped open. It became bright like a light bulb just popped out of the top of his head. Sol knows exactly what that look means. I'm not going to skip class. How about it? Wait, what? I am going to skip class. I read it completely the opposite way. I am going to skip class. How about it? Fuck this school. They, they're going to treat us badly. Then let's be the bad guys. Hugo said this with a mischievous look on his face. Sol just sighs. He then turns to you, seemingly waiting for your response. The thought of skipping is quite a gamble. Your next class is with Crow in art history. But then again, your teacher will probably only do some boring ass introduction. Missing one wouldn't hurt, would it? I mean, we're kind of here to like, you know, get good grades and like earn monies and shit and get to the higher class. If we skip a class, it's not really doing it though, is it? You know? Uh, fuck it, we're bad boys. We skipped that. We skipped that. Yago lets out a small cheer and gives you a thumbs up, and then Soul gives you a cheeky smile of his own. Oh, we love a little cheeky smile from Soul. <laughs> but how do we do that, though? Obviously, we can't go through the entrance since it's closed and guarded. Guarded entrances in schools? What? You can tell I'm English and I'm not looking at American. Well, I guess it's not even American, is it? It's Japanese because they've got bento boxes. Unless it's an American school full of weebs. <laughs> I know a way. Without wasting any more time, Sol leads the way, going through the backside of the school near the gardens. <gasps> oh, a little picnic walk. Oh, so scenic and lovely. The edges, of course, were barricaded by a tall iron fence. Sol finds a bush and pushes it aside, revealing a gaping hole. Oh my god. <laughs> well, please, call me Harry. Well, that's quite convenient. Did you make this hole, Sol? <laughs> oh, well, you could make my hole sore, Sol, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Uh, he did. <laughs> I did. Hugo went ahead first through the hole. Sol waits for you first before following right after. You just want to look at my hole, Sol, whilst we go through the whole hole that Sol didn't make that Hugo made. But you just want to look at my hole, Sol. And I ain't going to complain. The three of you went past a few bushes and shrubs, the leaves falling as you passed by them, the red and orange leaves scattering around and some making its way into your uniform before you all eventually made it out and met with the pavement. I love just this one repeating sound that's not, like, repetitive or distracting in any way. <laughs> so, where do we go now? There doesn't seem to be anyone around. Hyago thought for a moment, looking around before pulling out his phone. Suddenly he lets out a gasp, <laughs> scrolling through his phone faster before gripping on Sol's shoulder, earning him a hiss from the taller male. <laughs> Sherlock Holmes is out. Is he gay? Oh, thank goodness, man. At least he feels comfortable in the modern age to dig into his own sexual desires, you know? He investigated that one and he cracked the case. My ears. Oh, yeah, it's the detective movie I keep seeing on the television. Television? Who says television? <laughs> TV, homie. Come on. I'm, I'm looking uncool in front of my boy to be. Maybe one day. I thought it wouldn't come out till next week. <laughs> Did I set the date wrong? With that, Hyogo started sprinting, leaving you and Sol behind. <sighs> for the love of... For the love of what, Sol? Hmm? Is it Jesus? Is it the baby Jesus? Is it the Messiah? <sighs> Sol placed his hand on his hips before walking to where you and Hyogo ran off as you followed. That's a weird move to do. To put your hands on your hips as you're walking, that's like... Very catwalk-esque, you know? That's exactly what I picture when you put your hands on your hips before you walk. Kyoko kept tapping away at his phone. His shoulders went slump. I guess he did get the date wrong. Shoving his phone back into his pocket, he turned to you and Sol and clasped his hands together, pulling the biggest puppy dog eyes you've ever seen. <sighs> we have got to watch it. Can we, Harry? Can we, Sonny? Hyogo begged, get on all fours then, be a real good little puppy. <sighs> you can go ahead and watch the movie. <sighs> I'm gonna roam the arcade while you're at it. <laughs> well, hey, homie, there's a catalog of videos to watch, you know? You go watch the Coffin of Andy and Lele series, you know, the one that ruined my channel and set me on a path of doom and destruction for the rest of the existence? <laughs> that was great! Hugo pouted, his eyes went half lidded, and the sparkle in his eyes was gone. 
<laughs> but it's more fun if you're around. I know you like those crime videos you watch from time to time, so please. What was it? Live leak? <laughs> Sol, however, basing off his expression, isn't in the mood. Kyago gives up and turns to you. How about you, Harry? Would you like to come watch the movie with me? The ticketed food's on me, of course. I feel like I'd be betraying my own kind if I didn't go to the arcade, because, you know, it's kind of me. Uh, and also, I want to fuck the weird emo kid. Cut that bit out. That sounds really weird. I, I'm in roleplay, but oh, this makes it even worse. <laughs> I want to go with Soul. <laughs> go to the arcade. <laughs> yeah, I go shrugs. <sighs> All right, go on your little impromptu date then. And besides, I don't want to be a third wheel either way. To date? You're the one who decided we should skip class and do whatever we wanted. But you're the one who proposed it, weren't you? What the? F Why is it my fault? <laughs> yeah, and I wanted to watch a movie. Well, <laughs> don't let m me stop you two. Yago stuck his tongue out its soul. The said male only rolled his eyes. <laughs> well, I'll be heading in now. I'll just give you guys a call on where to meet. <sighs> sure. You and Kyago parted ways, and he gave both of you a wave before heading in a different direction. The Juan direction to the movies. <laughs> Soul turns to you. Uh, should we get going, Harry? <laughs> of course. <laughs> to the arcade. Oh, this looks dingy. This is the best type of arcade. The flashing neon lights of the arcade's exterior lights your way. The sound of each arcade machine reaching your ears. Da -ching, da -ching, da -ching, da -ching. I've never been here before. Is, is this place new? <sighs> Not really. It's just kind of hidden within the city. I see, I see. D do you get out a lot, Soul? You seem to know places. <sighs> I know places because I get my ass dragged by Hugo. Here I go. Hugo, here I go. Is that so? You laughed. Soul shrugged it off as he shook his head. He takes out a few coins from his pockets before handing it to you. They were tokens. So, which one do you go for first? <laughs> wow, you came in prepared. <laughs> as always... Come on. God. I always keep quarters of tokens in my pocket at all times. Did you not wonder why I was jingling in like a reindeer at Christmas time? <laughs> Soul hands out his hand and you accept it. He held it tight with a light squeeze and you and him roam around the arcade. It's my new channel, by the way. Roam around the arcade. Welcome to subscribe. <laughs> you and Soul went and played multiple arcade games. Some you win and some he does. But you often get the feeling that he lets you win for the sake of you winning. <laughs> Come on, Sol, that's like the fifth time I won. Ain't no way you're this bad. What are you, a fake gamer? Name five video games. <sighs> Maybe you're just that good, Harry. <laughs> yeah, you fell hat on me. <laughs> just as you're about to insert another coin, however, you realize you ran out of tokens. Sol takes notice of this and, of course, hands you some of his. I'll go to the counter and grab a few more tokens. You don't mind staying here for a bit, right? How much should I pay you for the tokens? <laughs> it's on me. <laughs> don't worry about it. Wait here. Uh, Giving you one last look, he hurriedly went to the counter. You looked around the area. The dinging sounds from various machines filled the arcade. Should I... <laughs> should I, like... Turn this channel into like a role playing channel, and I'll just pretend. I'll just get a green screen, and behind me it will just be like an arcade, and I'll just have constant noise of arcades going on behind me whilst I play. And then we'll just role play, and I'll just never address it. That's where we're gonna go with this channel from now on. <laughs> from the corner of your eye, you spot a claw machine. Maybe playing a few games wouldn't hurt, you said to yourself at a crowded place, not looking insane at all. Going to the claw machine, you check the contents inside a cat plushie, a Shiba Inu plushie, and a horse plushie. Well, well, well. They all look so cute. Which one should I try to win? Let me think. Well, if we want to get, uh, you know, if we want to see a horse of our own tonight, you know what I'm saying? You know, you, you know what I'm saying? You remembered how Soul likes horses. Maybe you could try and win one for him. These are all his tokens, after all. You took out some tokens Sol gave to you and you inserted one into the coin slot. The machine whirs to life and you take the joystick in your left hand 
and hovering over the red button with your eye. You were focused, eyeing the claw in its position, trying to align it with the horse plash. Do it, do it, do it. The claw takes hold of the plash. Your eyes widen as you crush your fingers, hoping it catches. But you were interrupted by a sudden smack to your ass. <laughs> you jerked and turned around. <laughs> what the fuck? Ew. <sighs> well, well, well. <laughs> what do I have here? You turn around and met with a tall figure, a cocky smirk on his face. He looks well off, like those typical spoiled rich kids you see in movies. His hair a bit tussled with two men, you assume his bodyguards beside him. He reeks of tobacco, making you crack. You said nothing but tried to move away from his sight, but you were stopped by another tall figure. You're guessing he's with this asshole. <laughs> now, where do you think you're going, sweetheart? You're here alone? <sighs> yes, and I would pretty much prefer to be alone. The man, however, did not listen. <laughs> oh, why don't you come with me and I'll show you how some of these games are played. Holy shit, is this what like Discord mods are like if they got out of, out of the house? This is crazy. He raised his hand to reach your shoulders, but before he could touch you, however, you kicked him between his legs. <laughs> he doubled over and clenched his lower region and groaned, escaping his lips. His goons <laughs> were taken aback, and then his bodyguards also came rushing to help. <laughs> now it's my chance. <laughs> Multiple heavy footsteps were coming after you as you ran. You turned every corner you can, trying to make them lose you. But three against one is not a good matchup. Anyone, please, please someone help. You pleaded, but the multiple sound effects and music from each machine within the arcade drowns your pleas. How quiet am I? Am I like, <sighs> help, <sighs> help? <laughs> I feel like no matter how loud an arcade is, I feel like I would hear someone screaming for their life. <laughs> you cursed under your breath and you focused on running. All you can think about at the moment is to get out. You managed to get out of the arcade, but you can still clearly hear the man and his goons on your trail. Wait, so you can hear the f <laughs> Hold up. You can hear the footsteps of people running after you, but you can't hear the screams of a bloody murder in an arcade because there's too many coin sounds and ding dong wee wee wheels going, and you can't hear- <laughs> Okay, whatever. Logic doesn't exist. It's a game, Harry. Calm down. <laughs> Wait a minute, I missed one. Go up. You looked around you and you found a few toilet stools. You rushed towards it and got in a stall, hurriedly opening and locking it as soon as you got in. Oh, lovely. At least it's, you know, a clean one. I've seen some real horror stories of men's uh, toiletries. The place stinks, but you didn't give it another thought as the beating of your heart rings through your ears. Tears filling up the corners of your eyes. You hear footsteps. Find him! The man's voice echo, 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 echo. You try to find something, and you thought of calling Sol, but you quickly took out your phone, and no signal. <laughs> Are you real right now? You can hear now how aggressively they tore open each store. They creep closer and closer to where you are. Oh my goodness. Anyone, please. Here you are. Are these stores or lockers? <laughs> uh... No, please. You've been a very bad boy. But don't worry, you can make it up to me by doing me a favor. <sighs> Fuck you and your favors. <sighs> I've been kind to you. Have you really? <laughs> I've been kind to you, but it seems you want to do it the hard way. He forcefully grabbed the edge of your uniform. Your eyes went wide as your fingers went cold. You quickly grab a hold of his wrist and you try to push him away. He's too strong. He is an alpha male. Oh god, I don't like this. He forcefully lifts up your uniform, revealing your stomach to him. You're going to give me a good time, little mister. Boys, hold him down. No, no, fuck up, let me go. The tears that were hanging on finally fell off down your cheek as you tried to stop him from going any farther. The two large men with him held you down and you tried to struggle, but to no avail. Your vision slowly becoming blinded by the hot tears that were filling up. It's no use. His grip is too strong and there's no one near to hear me. You close your eyes to shut. Please, just end quickly. Oh, oh, oh. Judging from the impact, the man's body was jerked off. Of all the words, of all the phrases to use in this, I feel like this is a weird one. That's a weird... <laughs>
Whatever. I'm not a writer. <laughs> you know what I mean, though. Judging from the impact, the man's body was zerked off as he was thrown to the side. You hear flesh hitting flesh. And another one. God. Uh. That's enough. So. Oh, wait, Hyago is here as well. <laughs> not yet. Holy shit. That's enough. You broke his nose already. No. Soul. That's enough. Harry needs your help. At the mention of your name, the familiar reddish-orange eyes went wide open before turning to you. Soul quickly went to your side, his eyes wide with shock before crouching down and giving you a hug, his shoulders shaking as he embraces you. You said nothing, however, too stunned to speak at what just transpired before you. The man now lay on the ground, a pool of blood seeping out of him. The rest of his goons passed out on a random corner. A random cor- wait, so you're telling me Hyago and Sol just like actually decimated a, a tall rich kid and two beefy, presumably bodyguards. That's cool. Wow, okay. Martial arts kiddies. <clears throat> you looked up and you're met with all too familiar eyes of Hyago, but they weren't the kind ones you usually see on his face. Hyogo's eyes twitched as he sighed, trying to hide a visible irritation, but failing. He looks around at the mess Sol made before turning to check up on you. He said nothing, his hands in his pockets, while he looks down at you in Sol's embrace. <sighs> it's getting quite late. We should head home. Hyogo tapped Sol's shoulder, making the tall male bury his face further in between your neck before eventually letting go. His eyes were bloodshot, his face red from either anger or worry. You aren't sure, but one thing's for sure is that this man before you cried. He's a weeping for me. He loves me already. He cried for you. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have hurt you. I... So, say nothing. Thank you for saving me. Um... I feel like if I'm in this actual, if, we, if I'm role-playing, I'm going to be a little bit shocked. I'm probably going to stay quiet. I'm going to be real. Noticing your silence, Sol looks away, too scared to meet your gaze as his shoulders keep shaking. Here. Beside you, Hugo extends his hand for you to take. You notice on his hand is the same horse plush you tried to win back at the arcade crane game. You took Hugo's hand as he... Wait, so Hugo was at the arcade? What the? You took Kyago's hand as he helped you to get up. Sol stands as well, but backs away from you a few steps. Did I ruin, like, did I ruin everything because I said nothing? I feel like if you were just, you know, if that whole scenario just happened to you, I feel like you probably would be a little, a little... For a minute. You'd be like, let me process what just happened. And now he's, like, getting butthurt about it? Come on. Come on, Sol, don't be nice guy about this. We should head back up. It's quite late after all. Both you and Sol didn't say anything, but not long. Kyogo gives you both a smile before walking away. Sol kept a firm grip of your hand, seemingly afraid to let you go. Kyogo lets out a sigh. <sighs> well, I guess we can't get into that arcade anymore. Those guys might come back to teach us a lesson. <sighs> they ever come back. I'll give them more than just a broken nose. I'll give them a horse plushie and a couple tokens. Because that's just the kind of guy I am. <laughs> You're pretty scary right now, Sol. Good. I'd like to keep it that way. Yogo shakes his head as he rummaged through his pockets before handing Sol something. You didn't quite see what it was, but judging on the scowl on Sol's face, he doesn't like it. <sighs> I told you these don't work anymore. <laughs> it's because you aren't taking it, you fool. Now take it tonight. Sol grumbled like a child who just got scolded before taking whatever Yogo gave him and tucked it into his pockets. <laughs> anyway, your place is just around this corner. You should head back as soon as possible. <laughs> I'll be taking Harry home. Sol's eyes narrowed from holding your hand to wrapping his arm around yours at a possessive hold as he leaned closer while still glaring at Hyago. No, <laughs> I can walk him home. <laughs> Clearly you're not in a good condition to fight again. Wait, are we phase two in? What do you mean fight again? I, I thought we were just walking home. <sighs> I can still fight. 
There was something in Hyago's eyes that made your blood cold. The usual happy-go-lucky expression he had on his face was gone. Looking back at Soul, he seems unfazed at it, as if it's challenging him. Hyago's right, Soul. You, you look beaten up. <laughs> but Harry... <sighs> at least he knows his limits. Saul said nothing but clenches his fist. You noticed a few red marks on his knuckles. Your eyes furrowed. Yeah, <sighs> I'm fine, Harry. Saul tries to reassure you. You shook your head now. Well, for me, you aren't. You look up at him, giving him a reassuring smile. I'll be fine, Saul. Besides, I have Hyago to keep me safe. You go get home first and get some rest. <sighs> All right. Ah. <sighs> So, wait, before you go. He paused in his tracks. He raised his brows in curiosity. Holding the stuffed toy horse in your arm. Wait, what? Why do I have it now? Wait, I thought Hyago had it. Or did Hyago give I think Hyago gave it to me. Okay. Holding the stuffed toy horse in your arms, you gently handed over to him, catching him by surprise. Sol, however, shook his head now and gave the horse back to you. His hands wrapped around your hands as they hold the toy horse. Yeah, you want that. Plus, I don't deserve it. Not after that. But I, I want it for you. Consider this as your reward for saving me. Uwu. So stares at you in disbelief. From your face to the stuffed horse in your hand. His hands were shaking as he takes the toy horse from your hands. Brushing your fingers, making him shiver. Ooh. Making me shiver. I'll take care of it, Harry. I swear to you. It's just a plushie, dude. Chill out. <laughs> He squeezed your hands, too hesitant to let go, before his hold eventually slipped as he lets go. With that, Sol takes his leave. He walks backwards, his eyes still on you, making sure you're in his sight before probably walking... front. Here I go, sighs. You turn to face him. <laughs> well, ain't he a charm? Is it working? He raised a brow at the question. Working what? <laughs> Charming you, obviously. <laughs> Don't worry, this is a secret between you and me. He says with his finger on his lips and a wink. You blushed. Ooh. ooh. <laughs> He's nice. I, I, I win my life after that. And, and. You chuckle thinking about the long-haired male. <laughs> He's handsome, I'll admit that. He deserves my virginity too. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> what's, what's with that smirk on your face? Oh, <laughs> Nothing. Before you could retaliate with a question, his gaze softened, taking you a bit aback as he looked down on the pavement below, kicking a pebble. Have you <laughs> ever liked someone, Harry? <sighs> What's with this sudden question? Just answer. You paused as you thought for a second, and the first person that appeared in your mind was... Ooh, I get to choose between Crow and Soul. Um, I mean, it's pretty obvious. At the moment, isn't it? Considering we've like blown soul off in every or blown crow off in like every possible way for soul. You thought of soul. How he protected you, how he didn't seem to hesitate to beat those guys down. Or jerk them off in in the uh author's own words. The pure terror in his eyes of how worried he was. You couldn't get it out of your head. He's been an amazing friend, but even if he did beat up those guys non-stop. Is that a red flag? Maybe. Do you care? Maybe not. Love does crazy things. <laughs> a smile made its way to your face, and that was enough of a confirmation for Kyago. Eventually, you arrive at the door of your apartment. You thank Kyago for accompanying you. He gives you a smile, rubbing the back of his head. <laughs> See you tomorrow, Harry. <laughs> Sorry the day didn't go well. It's okay, Kyago, but... We're going to have a proper plan next time. <laughs> of course. Are we not going to mention the fact that your like movie ended super prematurely and you were like at the arcade with the plushie? Are we just going to... That doesn't matter? Kyago nodded as he turned his heel, his back facing you, ready to leave. But he remains still on his spot. Hmm. Harry. Y yeah? Be careful walking late at night, okay? You pause, turning your head slightly at him. There's been multiple cases of missing people lately. I suggest you go home with someone. Anyone. Just don't go alone, alright? I, I understand. Missing people? When did that happen? No, 
when did it start? Oh, and one last thing, Harry. He turned his head around as he looked at your confused face. His eyes soft, but the light against him makes it seem like he's giving you a warning. <sighs> Take care of soul for me, okay? And with that, he left. Are you disappearing? Was that all like foreshadowing? Because now you're walking home alone and you just said essentially like goodbye. What's going on here? What's going on here? You entered your apartment, the lights dim as you ground, searching for the light switch. <sighs> Much better. You nod in approval before heading into your kitchen. You open your fridge and start rummaging around for something to eat. <sighs> you sigh as nothing good besides the leftovers from yesterday's dinner. You shrugged, deciding to heat this one up after you set your things down. Done. Down, I guess. You don't really feel like cooking or ordering either. You sighed as you closed the door to your fridge as you made your way to your room. You placed your school bag near the desk and you take your seat, skimming through your notes you had taken from the day as you wrote down needed notes. Going on with your silent staring contest with a blank paper before you, you let out a groan. Deciding to do work later, you closed the notebook and stood up. You turned to your window, noticing it being slightly ajar. That's weird. I thought I'd close this. Uh-oh. You went near it to close it shut, but was met with a now broken lock. Cursed. Ugh, I already replaced this two days ago. Ugh, maybe I shouldn't buy my locks online. Why does buying locks online make it any different? And also, why are you just like, Oh, not again, someone got into my apartment. <laughs> you let out a groan as you left it alone and went out of your room and into your living room. Your TV... Blared as much. Wait, what? Why is my TV now on? Your TV blared as you munch on some leftovers you got from the fridge, a movie currently playing as you kept your eyes on the protagonist. If you recall correctly, it's one of those films Jess keeps talking about, starring her favorite lead actor. You kind of get what she was gushing about. The lead does look attractive. The blonde, wavy hair, sharp eyes with eyes as pink as fuchsia. Hmm. And you still can't remember the actor's name. You took out your phone as you start to search up the name of the actor when it suddenly changed, and instead the blonde actor on screen, a report comes in with the banner below. Another missing person case? Is this what Hyakyo was talking about? A shiver went up your spine, remembering the broken lock on your window back in your bedroom. <laughs> nah, -uh. <laughs> not tonight, Harry. No scary thoughts for tonight. Turning off the TV, you went back to the kitchen to grab something to drink. You opened your fridge, feeling the cold air hitting your face as you rummaged through. Taking out a pitcher of orange juice, you take a glass from your cupboard as well as pour the juice to the last drop, taking a sip from it. You check the clock on the wall. 9.30pm. <laughs> that late already, huh? You check your front door and your window, seeing everything locked before grabbing your glass and finishing the last drops of orange juice before heading back to your bedroom. Now dressed in your nightwear, you let out one last stretch and you're escaping from your... <laughs> Getting into your bedsheets, you laid in comfort. Today was a lot, you thought. Another yawn escaped your lips. I thought you said the last yawn. So it wasn't the last one. You lied to me, novelist. You must be really tired, you thought. Your eyes going half-lidded. And eventually, sleep took over. Thank you for playing day two. Thank you so much for playing the kid at the back of the day to you too. Oh, so that's all there is at the moment? It's a it's a whip? It's a whip! Oh, okay. As of March 11th, 2024, Future Me will be taking a break from development in the hopes of finishing my current internship. But rest assured I'll be back once I'm free and I'll be on my Twitter for the account. Okay. So this is on an indefinite hiatus for now. That kind of sucks, but hey. I understand it. Real life sucks and you gotta spend all your time doing, like, you know, stuff that actually earns you money. Like, comment, subscribe. Have a wonderful day, evening, night, week, life. So I've forgotten what the intro was. You know what it's about. Like, subscribe. Ding that bell. I stream sometimes. See you there, maybe. I don't know. I'm not your dad. He left 40 years ago. 40? How fucking old are you people?